All right, what's going on, guys? So what I'm going to do is I kind of want to make a series of just always in trading. You know, if I if I could recommend one thing to anybody on starting this out, it would be to trade always in, trade one market. I if you can trade the, you know, the e-minis. And when I say the e-minis, I mean really the micro e-minis, the MES or MES.D. Uh, whenever I'm trading the micros, which is 99% of the time, I will just watch and chart off the actual e-mini contract. If you think about it, the micros have to follow the, the underlying, you know, the, the actual e-mini contract. Um, so they really can't deviate. Plus, you just have more volume on the actual E-mini, so it just makes more sense to watch it. Same thing with gold. If I'm ever trading uh, micro gold, I'm just going to watch the gold futures contract. But either way, if I was, what I would do, and I'm going to kind of treat this, these upcoming videos, and I don't know how long, of just always in. I would trade always in. I would trade one market, and I would get to the point where... I would only do that until one can trade three regular e-mini contracts or 30 micro contracts, I think. And if you can average four to six points a day. Uh, everybody knows if you can make four to six points a day, you just push volume, you're good to go, and you can do whatever you want. And I think people lose sight of that. I, I certainly do plenty of times. Uh, one thing I find myself it's kind of a tug of war internally is, you know, I look at a chart and I generally know always in for me, I feel very strong about, but I always have the temptation to want to do, you know, try things or not necessarily try things, but just scalp when I really just trade always in because I know I can be very consistent with it. So with that said, let's just look at always in. Now, I'm not going to really explain. I'm, I'm going to assume you guys know always in, in the sense of what it is and all of that. If you don't, go to the bottom of my videos, look at the you know description, click on Brooks Trading Course, and take a look at it. I mean, the reality is it's like a $200 course. It's not that expensive. Uh, but I'm going to assume most people watching me have Al's video course because... These videos should be a supplement, and it's really just my, you know, my translation of Al, what Al is teaching. So don't get that misconstrued. All right, so coming in today, we gapped up. Big tail below, so if I was trading always in, there's nothing I can do on bar one. I do like this, nothing I can do on bar one. Same with bar two. Let me just... Well, that's better. There's nothing I can do on bar two, same with bar three. Bar four, I could buy above it, and always in traders probably would buy. No reason to get out. You can get out here, it's kind of a second entry short. You can say low one, low two, double top. If you didn't get out here, you get out below a bear bar. It's still breakout mode, plus you're at the top of a trading range from up here. Three consecutive bear bars, but at the bottom of the range, these bars aren't necessarily that big. So it's reasonable to get out of shorts above. You certainly can. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Big outside down bar, big follow through bar. Traders will either sell to close or sell here. It's a doji bar. It is a possible second leg trap, but it is follow through, so it lowers the odds of the second leg trap. Now we have another bear bar, so it even further lowers the odds of the second leg trap. The odds are you'll get a second leg down and probably some sort of measured move. You know, maybe of this, maybe a measured move of the entire bar. This is a trading range though, so don't be surprised if we go down here and stall. Uh, traders, do they have to get out above? I don't think they have to, some will. And if they do, they'd miss out on this. And then we get a bull bar. I'd get out of, I'd get out of uh, shorts above, outside down for a third sell climax. So really three pushes down, one pull back two, and maybe three, or you can say one, two, and three. 
or you can say one pullback, two pullback, three. Doesn't really matter. Bottom of a trading range, you've had disappointment after every bar. And what are we going to get here? We're probably going to get disappointment. And we got a great looking bull bar. Uh, could be strong enough that you get a small second leg. So if you did buy above, you need to stop below. Always in bears, if they didn't get out here, which I think they probably would here, they definitely get out here. This is one of those trades where it's really high. The odds are you're going to go back to here. This is a reasonable buy. And let me just go over here. 10 o'clock is a reasonable buy. So traders will buy above and scale and lower. You know, maybe they, they buy here, they buy more here. They, you know, maybe they just take a stop and they try and buy more down here. It doesn't matter. There's all sorts of things they could do. They could just, and that one common thing is four points. So they buy, they take the buy at 450 and they buy at 050, which would be, you know, somewhere around the close of this bar. Either way, it's always in long above, stop below. If you don't do that, you you know you can wait for a second entry. Some traders will buy above and get out below the bar. I don't think they. I don't think you have to. Second entry, so bulls buy stop still down here, maybe down here. And strong breakout. You know bulls probably can. You know they can get out below. I would certainly wouldn't sell. It's a minor reversal. So you either get out or you stay long. And maybe you get have to get back to. You gotta, if you got out here below this bar, maybe you have to buy again above here. Three consecutive, four consecutive bars. Excuse me, odds are you'll go a little bit higher. Probably best just get out below. And you know, do you buy again here? I mean, you can. Not really a great setup, but if I had to do anything, I'd be I'd get long above this bar, maybe stop down here. Then we have a double top, lower high major trend reversal, double top with here, lower high from here to here. Uh, bulls get out, bears can sell. But what do you do here? Probably have to get out of shorts. And then you know, maybe you sell again. Aggressive bears will. And then you can see we just kind of trickled down, sold off sharply, turned up. Bears definitely have to get out. Aggressive bulls will buy, but it's not a great trade. The risk is big. If you do buy, stop down here. You're betting on, you know, maybe a quick test above the open of the day. Maybe, maybe you do the open of the week, but it's very unlikely. It's at 14. It's at like it's at 31.16. And there you go. So the purpose of always in, just to reiterate is to keep things really simple. You know, if you think about it, you know, you know, if you know that, if I see a bear breakout and I say, okay, bear breakout, it's the first swing of the day, you know, 50-50 chance, let's say it fails, or maybe, you know, 50-50 chance, it turns in the opposite direction. Or I say, hey, we've had consecutive sell climaxes here, 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 and here. Okay, if we, if at this point we've seen the low of the day, you know, what I can do by trading always in is I can buy here, put my stop down here, and I can set a target four points higher. I can set a target all the way up here. You know, who knows? But I don't have to manage it as frequently. I can just walk away. And maybe I come back in two hours. If I bought here at 1050 and come back at 1250, you know, here is 1250. I'm still made. You know, eight, you know, three points, three and a half points, something like that. So let's go into the prior day real quick. Okay. So, and the goal with always in is you really want to keep things simple, keep it binary. I want to, I want to buy breakouts or sell breakouts and it has to be in the direction of the move. Or I want to wait for a pullback or a stop entry. So really you're trading, you're, you're buying the close, selling the close, or buying above a bar, selling below a bar, and that's it. And the more simple, the better. So here's bar one. I see, uh, let me just go like this. So we have a little context. 
So bear breakout, pull back for a few hours in this really big bar. Well, maybe I sell. The, I could sell the close to the bar. I think it's always in short on the close to the bar surprise. So odds are you'll have a second leg down. Sorry about that noise. Okay, so I had to pause for a minute. But back to where we were. Big bear bar, always in the short, probably going at least a little bit lower. You can sell the close, bad follow through, but not enough to reverse it. So still going lower, you can sell. Stop up here. Second leg down, you know, do they have to get out above? I don't think bulls, I don't think bears necessarily get out above. Okay, what about here? Eh, I mean, they can, I don't think they really have to. Then we have a big bear bar. And the reason why I say you don't really have to it's kind of a few things. It's one of those trades where it kind of forces you to do something in the middle, which may not be the best thing. You know, look where price. So I'm gonna assume price went down and turned up. Well, actually, obviously it did because the open's down here. Still kind of waking up. It's at a 50% pullback. So it's kind of one of those situations where if I'm selling up here, I'm selling in the middle, so you know, my risk reward is at least one to one. So it's not the greatest buy above. The risk is big, which is why a lot of traders sold it. So now I have a big bear bar. You move your stop up here. You know, what do you do? Well, it's three pushes down, maybe, a, you know, one, two, three, and then one. So it's really, depends how you look at it. Two, second leg trap, low of the day, low of this day. Not a lot of energy, bad follow through here, bad follow through. Breakout, bad follow through, very breakout, starting the form, bad follow through. So, you know, you're at the low of the range, it's probably not gonna break below. So you can easily, you can definitely get out of shorts. I'd get out of long, I'd get out of shorts above the bar if I wasn't already out. Starting to trend up. Kind of a second into a short, double top. Bears want to double top measure move down. Probably always in long. Uh, if I wasn't out along longs below here, I'd probably get out below this bar. I don't know if I'd sell. If you can, but traders would be quick to get out. So if I did sell, I'd get out along, I'd get out above here. Uh, bulls, you know, is it always in long? Probably you can buy above, maybe put a stop down here. You don't really have to. Second entry buy, bulls will buy, maybe put a stop below or below here. And we're starting to rally. Clearly always in long. Stop below here, maybe here. And looks like we're kind of just going sideways. You know, I don't think bulls have to get out. They can, you know, maybe get out below here or here. But again, first virtual down will probably fail. Strong breakout, so again, always in long. So bulls need to get long if they're not. And then, you know, really, it's still, you know, new highs, so we're getting a wedge and deep pullback. So traders, some traders will just take profits and look to buy lower. Others, you know, maybe they get out below here, but they don't have to. But that is the problem of why traders will get out in a channel because they know it's a channel, three pushes up, and at some point you're going to fall below a, some sort of higher low. So why I said you probably get out below here, other traders just take profits. And that's pretty much the rest of the day. I mean, it's always in short, you know, maybe, you know, maybe it's always in short, but it's kind of a difficult thing to do because you're selling at what's probably support down here. Let me find just kind of an interesting. Yeah, I mean, here's a good one. So always in short, this bar, this bar, this bar, just sell, stop up here. You don't have to get out even here. You can, but if you do, you gotta get short again. Always in long, somewhere in here, bulls will buy. Have to probably get out of longs below here. Uh, strong enough, kind of big up, big down, probably gonna get a second leg, so don't buy here. You know, maybe you buy here, but you know, it's still kind of tricky. Probably stop down here, or maybe if you do buy, here you get out here, and you buy again here, you buy again here, and then 
you know, what do you do? Do you get out here? I don't think you have to. You know, maybe you get out up here. That's pretty much. So I hope this kind of helps. I'm going to be talking a lot more about always in the future. So stay tuned.